The steps to finding balance in life can be found in the rhythmic cadence of a long run for people across Colorado. The thing about smoking is it hits you a lot faster. In a truly Colorado way. Uh, I'm rolling a joint before I go out for a run. Josiah Hesse. I never run without cannabis. Literally wrote the book on his version of the runner's high. From daily jogs to races. Uh, these are all of my racing medals. He runs 50 Ks. Yes, quite heavy. 30 miles while stoned. I couldn't imagine running a mile 10 years ago. I was drinking too much. I was uh, using cocaine. I was chain smoking cigarettes. I was eating bad food. When Hesse first started running, he was struggling in life. Uh, I'd read that it was helpful with depression and anxiety. But he was struggling to start. I was pudgy. Uh, I was soft. Running was hard. It was painful. It was boring. Didn't really care for it. It was painful until he started stepping stone. And for me, discovering that a very specific dose, uh, around 10 to 20 milligrams of THC, was a complete game changer. It made the experience uh, easy, uh, fun, just delightful. Increasing euphoria and easing the pain, not just for him, but for many others, as outlined in his book, Runner's High. And research has shown that after about 30 minutes of running at 70% heart rate, anandamide is released into the brain and into the body. And this reduces pain and increases joy. But he says marijuana changes everything. THC and other cannabinoids will uh, jumpstart that system get it happening a lot quicker and more efficiently so people can experience the natural runner's high much faster. Books and stories are one thing, but what about the science? <laughs> Very, the most Colorado thing I could potentially be doing in grad school. <laughs> Laurel Gibson. Definitely. Is a researcher at the University of Colorado Boulder. There have been no human studies to date on the effects of legal market cannabis products on the experience of exercise. Gibson wants to provide people with actual data on the combination of cannabis and exercise. It's mostly anecdotal reports of people being like, oh, I tried this one time, it was great, why don't you try it? And there's really no scientific evidence that they're going off of. Yet more and more dispensaries are open across the nation. We're really curious to see how what's readily available and commonly used is going to affect exercise. So when participants come into the lab, this is where they'll run. She plans to have dozens of people come in, first sober and then not. So they answer those several times throughout the exercise bout. To take an objective look on the impact of pot and exercise. It's wonderful, it's groundbreaking, uh, it's exciting, but it's also well overdue. Hesse was part of that study. He calls it the next steps. So I think this study that's going on at NCU Boulder is going to be a stepping stone to a whole lot more research and a whole lot more debate around this topic. With photojournalist Ann Herbst, Nelson Garcia, Nine News.